Hi everyone and welcome back to Game Maker Cast. In this video we're going to be finishing up the Space Shooter series. There's a few things we need to do so we're going to wrap it all up into one. So that means let's roll the introduction and get right into it. <laughs> The first thing I want to do is make sure that our player can get hurt by the enemy bullet and the enemy laser. If we load up the object player, we already have collision events for these two objects, but we don't have any code in there. So let's start off with the enemy bullet. And what we'll do is we will remove a hit point from the current hit points. Remember that these variables are coming from our create event and they are stored inside this structure here. So once we have removed one of the hit points, we can go ahead and remove the bullet that's actually colliding with our player. Now for myself here, I'm going to play a sound and I'm going to randomly choose between the three impact sounds that we have. Now what we need to do is we need to check to see if our current hit points are less or equal to zero. This means that our ship is dead and we should stop a few sounds. And in particular, we are going to stop the engine sound. Now right now, this sound is not playing. So let's go to the create event and down here at the bottom, what we want to do is start the sound and we're going to be using the regular sound engine here. The true value will mean that it loops, so as long as our player is alive, we'll have a little bit of an engine sound. So finally going back to the enemy bullet, all we need to do here is destroy our instance, and then you can choose whether or not to play an explosion sound. In the game that is released, we are choosing a random explosion, so once again we'll just use the audio play sound, and we'll choose a random explosion sound, and we'll just play it once. So this code is exactly the same whether you're using it for the bullet or the laser. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in. This would be a great opportunity to extract it into its own function, but this is fine just using the copy paste. Now we need a way to display the health. So we'll go up to the drug GUI and let's loop through each of our hit points. Now remember, we are using the maximum hit points here because we're going to compare the current to the maximum hit points or whatever the index is on. If our current hit points is greater than our index, then we'll draw the sprite at full alpha. Otherwise, we'll dim the alpha and put it a little bit lower. So using that logic, we can write a simple if statement. And then if our hit points is greater than I, we'll set the draw alpha to one. Otherwise, let's set it to something a little bit lower, like 0.4. Now that we have our alpha set, the next thing we need to do is actually draw the sprite. I have a specific sprite here that is a little bit smaller than our regular ship, and we're drawing it at the index of 0, so that's the first frame. We're using a padding of 10, and then just doing a little bit of math here to move it to the right. One thing to remember when we're done drawing, we'll reset our alpha to 1. Now if we run our game, we should see in the top left our hit points, and if we were to allow our ship to get hit, one of them would go dim. If you don't want to wait for your ship to come in, you can go ahead and you can just change the current hit points to say two. You could run your game and that will also make the same effect. Now let's implement some screen shake. Now I am using the filters and effects in this particular room here for a shake in Venet. If you don't have a subscription or permanent license, I'll leave a link in the description below on how to create your own camera shake without using these filters. Inside the object player in the create event, you can see right here on line 20, we have an instance camera variable currently set to no one. If we open up the object player and particularly the step event, you can see that we have an empty region for the camera. What we need to do is find our camera in our game and we can write a simple if statement to do that. We can say if our instance camera equals no one, then find the first instance of our camera itself. Now our player doesn't really need to care whether or not the camera is there, but we're going to be using it to shake the actual camera. So let's scroll down to where we have our shooting. And after we play a sound, let's shake the camera. We'll first check to make sure that the camera instance does not equal no one, meaning that we found the camera from above. And then we are going to call a function called shake on that particular instance. So let's open up our object camera, open up the create event and the step event and maximize our code. You can see we left a comment for the screen shake. What we need to do is we need to grab the special effects layer and I named it FX shake. And then I have a variable to tell me whether or not it is shaking and then a timer. Now for the actual shake function, I'm gonna be storing it on this instance itself. You can see that we're gonna take an amount and the number of frames to shake. 
Now, using the new filters and effects, we can easily set the parameter. In our case, we're using the G magnitude parameter, and we're gonna set it to the amount. And the last thing I wanna do is set the two variables. I have the number of frames coming in, getting multiplied by the game get speed, and that's a little bit difficult because it's not really the frames, it's gonna be the length in seconds. So you might wanna change that, but I'm gonna leave mine as is. Now we are also telling it that the shake is enabled, and we'll come to the step event to check this. So in this step event, let's check to see if the shake is enabled. And if the shake is enabled, then what we wanna do is take one away from the timer. Now, if our timer is less or equal to zero, we can then set the shake layers magnitude to zero and disable the shake itself. Now, everything's all set up. So when our player actually shoots a bullet, the camera will shake and you could actually add this into different events if you wanted to. Now, I didn't really plan anything for the actual boss for when they die, so the only thing we should really do is make sure that we destroy that boss instance. In the step event, you can see we have our case statements here. Let's go down to the bottom of the first switch statement, and let's create a new case for the boss dying state. And in this particular state, all we really want to do is destroy the instance, and we don't have to worry about anything running below because we do not have a shooting state. And with that, our game is fully complete. You could come back into the spawner and particularly the create event and you can uncomment this line of code here which is all the way down to the bottom for my waves so when we run our game we'll have some hit points we have lives if any of these enemies end up hitting us we'll lose a life as well as the boss and we could play through our entire game so with that i'm going to end the series here i hope you'd enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one Thank you for watching the video series. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. A special thanks to the following patrons in no particular order. Ashby, Paul, Jerrica, Mary, Victor, Game Maker Community, Bear, and Robert. Once again, thank you all and I'll see you in the next video.